Hi, this is Marauders here. So today I'm in the very interesting position that in which that I can test out how it feels to write on both a resistive touch screen as well as a capacitive touch screen. So both of them have their own advantages during when you're using it as a normal user interface. But some of you who have used tablet PCs before will would know that they are that uh, both a resistive and capacitive touchscreens work differently, and you you might be asking yourself how exactly is the writing experience on both of these things. Okay, so I have both the Fujitsu UH nine hundred here, as well as a Lenovo S ten three T here. So the Fujitsu uses a resistive touchscreen, while the Lenovo uses a capacitive touchscreen. Let's go for the Fujitsu first. Okay. So this is a slick, small little device. Okay. Oh, password. Let's take care of that first. Okay, so now, okay, let's bring it up here so the camera compensates. Now this is a resistive touchscreen on the Fujitsu UH900 which means that any sharp pointy little object on the screen would be able to make contact and uh, register as hits. So no surprises there. Okay, I'm just get a blank sort. Now for writing experience on the resistive touchscreen is really easy. All you have to do is just find well any sharp, not sharp, any fine, smooth, pointed object like say a stylus, maybe a DS stylus or whatnot, and you can start writing on it. Unfortunately, this screen does not come with palm rejection detection, so I can't rest my palm on the screen as I write. But because I can just merely hold a normal pencil, this is it's just like writing normally. nothing much to it it's something that all of us have been used to before by writing with a on a normal touch screen device uh, nothing much you can talk about for resistive the resistive touch screen is pretty much the same so resistive touch screen feels just like normal i can write the only difference is i can't rest my finger on the screen because there's no palm rejection on this screen but other than that, if you you with a proper stylus, you can just write as normal and you can just draw as normal if you want to. Okay, so that's a resistive touchscreen. Now let's go for the Lenovo. Now this is a capacitive screen. Okay, log in, just set it down. The cool thing about the Lenovo is it has a pretty tight, it has a very tight convertible screen hinge so it doesn't rattle around as much. You can see, I'm just trying to shake it here. Very tight. So it's really good for, uh, you don't have to worry about it coming loose like other convertibles. Now a capacitive touch screen is different from a resistive, basically it's because of how it tracks the touch points. If I use my finger, it works perfectly. But yeah, you don't want you don't really want to write with your finger because depending on how uh, sweaty you are or how moist or how smooth your fingers are writing can be a very interesting experience and you can see it's not working too well right now i can feel a lot of dragging on the screen because my fingertip is slowing me down and again this screen also does not have palm rejection so i also can't rest my palm on this thing 
So it's obvious that if we want to write properly, we need some form of writing device. And well, our index finger just ain't gonna cut it too much for uh, for this purpose. Not to mention, how long can you write by holding your index finger like this? Hmm. Okay, so the first idea of any regular tablet PC user would be to try and use a stylus on it. So let's get back the same stylus that I used on the UH900. But nothing happens. You can see I'm, I'm tapping the screen, but nothing happens. This is because capacitive touchscreens register touches differently and non-conductive things like this, the plastic tip of this stylus and the fingernail They don't. Although I don't understand why the Lenovo's touchscreen sometimes seems to be able to conduct, detect my fingernail, and sometimes it doesn't. You can see it just breaks off the line sometimes, and sometimes it's perfect. So you can't use a normal stylus on a capacitive touchscreen. What? Okay, but. What you can do is to get a capacitive screen stylus. Now, this is, um, I don't know what material this is, but you can see that it's a chisel shaped thing. It feels spongy. Now, we can see that there's a little sharp edge to it. When I first got this stylus, the storekeeper said it doesn't work too well on the touchscreen because for in the first place, I expected this to work like a pen, so I hit it at an angle using the sharp point on the screen and you can see it doesn't work. Then I read the instructions which said you must fully press it flat as if it was your fingertip and then you can see it works perfectly. So, how well does, now that we have something to actually, like, a pen to write with, how well does this thing actually work? Let's check it out. Okay, let's give this a try. Does this, feeling is very weird. It's really very weird, because... Instead of a sharp point like a normal pen, I'm pressing down an entire surface. And my palm is still triggering the screen I'm vectoring. Does this really work? Any better than my normal finger um, feels really weird I don't know is it because I'm not used to this the, the, the fact that I'm pressing a full flat surface on it or it's just that the capacitive screen just doesn't work well with a stylus in, in this form maybe I need to either find a new stylus or Maybe I should do like what they do on the internet and use a sausage and see. Um, but uh, right now I would say if you want to write on your screen with a like a normal pen and paper, I would say a resistive touchscreen or an active digitizer works better than a capacitive one. Because a capacitive one just doesn't offer a proper writing tool to scribble on it properly. Hmm, maybe that's why the iPad doesn't have any sort of stylus support. I guess uh, that's a way to think about it. Okay, see you guys next time.